HLS Show Me How, Tips for Delivering at Scale Live Events to Remote Workers. Hi, my name is Michael Giannotti, and I'm a Microsoft Teams Technology Specialist working for our Healthcare and Life Sciences Division. As always, you can find myself and my colleagues and all of our posts as well as webcasts at aka.ms slash HLS blog. That's aka.ms slash HLS blog. So today's challenge that we're looking at is the following. Number one, how to deliver consistent, timely executive messaging during times of business disruption. Number two, how to ensure that live broadcasts are available in full fidelity following live delivery for on-demand viewing. Three, provide for employee engagement. And number four, questions around networking, VPN configurations, being able to handle large scale streaming. So um, we're gonna be looking at each of these challenges and the solution around them. But when we think about being able to deliver timely messaging, you know, we might have something that causes business disruption that causes maybe a building has been damaged or a plant is down. Uh, a hospital facility needs to be evacuated, whatever the case might be, being able to quickly spin up and deliver at large scale, thousands of attendees live, being able to deliver executive message that's gonna provide for consistent messaging so that there's not rumors and innuendo and things that it can be addressed at the top level, whatever the business disruption might be, that's always a challenge with organizations, being able to quickly do so at the flip of a dime. We'll see how you can. Also to ensure that they're available on demand. People are still within organizations, even in the worst of times, the bulk of your employees are going to be engaged in work or other things. If it's truly disruptive, they might be focusing on family or other things and not be able to attend live. So how can we ensure that immediately following, people can on demand go back and take a look at that live delivery? Providing for employee engagement, of course, in any scenario where there's business disruption, there's bound to be questions. So how do we provide for that? How do we gather and capture that? and then make that available uh, you know, in responses to our employees, that's important. And finally, making sure that everything is set up. You know, For those employees on the corporate network, is our network prepared? Do we have some quick things that we can do to ensure it is? But as we're looking really at the remote worker, are our VPNs, virtual private networks, configured properly to handle that streaming? Or do we still have legacy settings in place that are going to adversely affect that? Those are very quickly addressed and we just want to make sure that we look at it. So from our standpoint, the solution to this is Microsoft Live Events. You get it as a part of Office 365. You can deliver up to 15 concurrently during the course of a day. Um, each session can deliver up to 10,000 concurrent live attendees per session. That's a lot of people that can be at the same time joining live, not to mention all the on-demand. And then finally, there's three different ways that you can deliver this that can include engagement based upon the needs of your organization. So what are we gonna take a look at? Well, we're gonna take a look at the three different flavors of live events. Then we'll dive into some of the tips on delivery. For example, what roles should we make sure are being covered in the delivery of a live event for it to be successful? What kind of format of content do we want to deliver and, and can we deliver and should deliver, right? Also, how do we handle Q&A? You know, if we have uh, potentially upset people, distraught folks, anxiety, etc., things may not always come across as professional and clear, but how do we uh, address that and how do we handle the Q&A during a live event? We'll take a look at the configuration, how things can be configured on the back end to provide 
for live events, and finally, a couple of resources for your organization to literally hit the ground running today, if so desired. So we'll pass that along as well. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the things that we're going to hear in our demonstration and discussion of Microsoft 365 live events. All right, so there are basically three flavors of Microsoft 365 live events, and they span across Microsoft Teams as Microsoft Teams live events, Yammer as a Yammer live event, and Stream as a Microsoft Stream live event. Each has a slightly different use case, and it's by design because it, this is not a one-size-fits-all. When we talk about webcasts, we really have different delivery. So the first we're going to look at is Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams provides this user interface, and it's really designed around the idea of large meetings, presentations, etc., that will span beyond the typical 250 limit of a Microsoft Teams meeting. When we go beyond 250 users, it becomes, starts to become unmanageable if everybody has voice, video, chat, and all those things, all interactive, and it can be difficult to wrangle people in. And so what we want to do is then move into a Teams live event. Teams live events allow us, just as all of them, to scale to 10,000 concurrent attendees, but with some specific functionality that's intended for large team delivery. Just by example, I'm in Microsoft's Healthcare and Life Sciences Division. We are a national organization with many, many, many members in that organization. We span well beyond 250, but we have monthly meetings. Those meetings can be delivered in Teams live events so that it makes it simple for the user or the organizer to schedule using micro they just use teams to schedule they use the teams client to deliver and it's a rich experience so real quickly we're just going to look at the scheduling portion then i'll show you what it would look like on the attendee end very quickly the the rest of it though we'll provide the resource links that get you up and running and how to but this is just a quick flavor so again it's meant to be simple to organize. This is, we're not inferring that a team needs to have its own AV people. They simply come in, say they want a new, not meeting, but live event. They can give it the date, the time. So we'll say this is, for example, executive live event could be the name, whatever you want to put in there. We could give a physical location if there's something like in a cafeteria or whatever. We can give the date, so I'm just going to say it's on Saturday, so nobody's going to watch that. We can put details in here. When we're done with that, we can go in and invite presenters and producers. And we'll talk more about the roles in, in a bit, but they are different in this instance. So a presenter is somebody who just presents be it their talking head, you know, face or uh, slides, applications, etc., things that are on their computer. That's all they do. A producer, however, can produce, can select what content is showing at any given time. They can moderate Q&A and some other things as well. When I select next, I'm then given three options. Now you can see this one has been grayed out because the settings are turned off for it, but it says, new live event permissions. And so for a live event, we can target specific people or groups, or and these, by the way, people and groups must be qualified domain uh, users. So we can go ahead and specify those. We can do an org wide as long as you have the link, but you are qualified a, a logged in user of our domain then you can access and finally there's public anonymous access and it's what i actually use to deliver webcasts on the public domain to customers how long will you produce your event so you can say or how will you i'm sorry produce your event so we have a couple of things do we want to make the recording available to attendees 
do want to have closed captions. So it recognizes my spoken language is English, but then I can choose up to six languages that in real time will have closed captioning available. So we could say simplified Chinese. Oh, I don't know. We could then say uh, French and Italian and Malay and Maltese. There we go. So we have a few there that we've chosen that will be available. That means those users, if it detects those settings in their browser and they turn on closed captioning, will automatically see it in their language with full character support. Intending engagement report, yes. And finally, do I want Q&A? Q&A in Microsoft Teams Live events is moderated Q&A. That means that any question posted, only producers will see or somebody who's taken that moderator role and was added as a producer. Uh, that means that they people can post questions. Moderators can actually respond directly to them. This is all through text. And finally, if the moderator or producer chooses to publish that question, it'll appear to all attendees. But we'll talk more about that in tips and tricks. Finally, if you have an external app or device you want to use, we're not going to. Teams is the client that will deliver this. So I'm going to go ahead and click schedule. And once I've done so, you can see here it says copy this link to send to attendees. All attendees need is a hyperlink. So if I click that, now it's copied to the clipboard. We're not going to be able to join as a presenter here or a producer because it'll knock us out of the session. Plus, I'm doing it via the web. You do need the rich client on a PC for delivery. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Once we've closed that, I'm going to go ahead up here and let's open up just real quickly. Watch on the web. We're not going to open the client because that'll be my personal one. And notice it started having, here's that event. Now see where it says this live event has not started. That's where we, as soon as the video started, we would see the live event streaming. And it would either be all content or all video talking head or a combination of content in a large frame and a smaller one for the talking head. But you can see here, I can see featured questions. Those are ones that have been posted by a user or attendee that the producer has published. We also just see my questions. And this is important because when we have a question, I can ask one and then the moderator can respond directly back to that person. And you can have a running Q&A in the background, right? And I can always close this window to go ahead and maximize. So from an attendee experience, it's simple, it's easy. From a um, you know a producer standpoint to set it up, I'm just using Microsoft Teams and the calendaring, so it's simple. Again, these are designed for large teams where we want to have interactivity, but we want it moderated. So we provide for moderated QA and it all leverages that team's look and feel even via the web interface. The next one that we have, however, is a little different. It's Yammer live events. Yammer is focused on those large groups or communities that you facilitate within Yammer. It can be for employee self-service. In this case, we have a crisis management discussions group where people can post questions and answers. They can dialogue. We can assign corporate uh, folks to monitor and respond to this, but it allows a place for employees to vent. And in fact, we've integrated that into our crisis management uh, dashboard here. So you can see here, there's that same uh, Yammer discussion. So it's a great way for us to dialogue and work with employees, but we may want to then for this particular group. Again, we might want to do some messaging at a high level. So uh, some executives or other folks with security, etc., may want to set up a live event to address this community. So it's simple. You can see here it's been enabled. I simply click create live events. 
I can do an external app or device. That means if I have an encoder like OBS or devices like New Tech TriCasters or Black Magic Boxes, there's a whole range of software. Microsoft 365 Live Events uses an industry standard called RTMP so that any encoder that's industry standard based can go ahead and push a stream to it. You could use Teams to deliver it. We're going to just, however, select external app or device. We're going to give it a title. So we'll say this is a um, crisis live update. There we go. And we can give, again, the start stop time. We can give a description. We can add producers here. And when we're done, I'm going to go ahead and select schedule. And you can see here what it's going to do is within Yammer itself, it has now, because we are the person setting it up, it has the start setup here so that we can go ahead and get that. But for an attendee, they're going to see this window with Yammer questions. So again, we have the ability to dialogue with our attendees, but it's capturing it all in this, the Yammer stream for crisis management discussion. Thanks for doing this, all right? We're going to go ahead and post that. Um, we can share this event, you know, send an email to folks, let them know in teams, whatever the case might be. I can cancel the event. But it has all this right here. It's capturing anything in uh, isolation to here. We don't see the whole threaded discussion for crisis management, just those done against the video. But if I come over here, uh, we're going to go ahead and we can see that you know we have some discussions, we have new conversations, and it's still not quite caught up. Um, it'll bring that on over, but. It's leveraging all the same areas for the discussion. So we can go ahead, ask questions, provide answers, have a whole dialogue around whatever's happening. And all the attendee needs is Yammer, right? They can go via the web here and access it quick and easy. Last but not least, I'm going to come back here. Let's go to the home page is Microsoft Stream Live Events. So live events, again, it's the exact same infrastructure, but sometimes we might want to do a much more polished or embedded version of a particular live event. So maybe it's going to be the CEO talking. and Perhaps we want to have him appearing right here on the homepage of our crisis management portal if we're talking about business disruption. So we can go ahead. We can start to set up a live event here. We're going to go ahead and give it a name. And we'll say this is CEO Mike Gennady on the, that should have been low end, on the crisis. There we go. And I can give a description. We can have a thumbnail to make it look a little more attractive. So we'll come over here. Let's go to pictures. I believe I have a picture of my bright, shiny face down here somewhere. And there we go. I got a profile pic here. We'll select that. Boom. So now you can see how it's done that. We have the kind of the semi-transparent overlay with the title. Notice again, start setup is here. We can select the primary language when the event starts, specific time or date, or as soon as the encoder is connected. Again, quick, fast, responsive. So I can go ahead and select that. Permissions, who can attend this? By default, everyone in the company, as long as they're authenticated, they can all attend. I could deselect that and have just specific groups, channels, or people. We're going to go ahead and leave it selected. We're going to go ahead and publish this. Once it's published, it's just waiting for me to do the setup. That's going to allow me to then grab the ingestion URL for our encoder. So something like OBS or hardware, we just copy 
this URL, and in fact, we can do two if we want higher availability, and pump that into our encoders that are going to capture all the video, audio, screen sharing, etc., and push it up to the service. The beauty of this is once we have all this, notice I can turn on my audience view. This is what attendees will see. And with this, I get the ability to share. So I could send them to the portal to this. I could just do a link to the stream portal or if I select share, I'm going to go ahead and copy this particular piece. We could have grabbed embed code, which is there as well, but I'm just grabbing that URL and I could come out here to my crisis management portal. It's just SharePoint. I could prepare my page for editing and now I say, look, I'm going to add the stream. There it is, stream. I want to add this video. I don't want all of stream a single video. The address is here and close that. Notice it dropped it in. We can go ahead and republish. There we are. And so now we have when I begin or the CEO begins to transmit, when they actually start running it, it'll appear right in line here in this page. And the second it's done, it's available for view. That brings me to the last piece of discussion. So all these videos then are available once we're finished and we then can view them as mentioned on demand so i'm going to go to a channel where we have some team meetings these are microsoft teams ones and so for example i have one here uh, that's an hour and 15 minutes and 27 seconds that's pretty long as an attendee though i can come here and let's mute and we'll pause for a moment and I could view the entire video if wanted. Uh, I could turn closed captions on. And if I skip ahead, you can see there they are appearing. So we have closed captions, but we also have some other things that are useful for users that attend that maybe miss something. Maybe they're looking for something they heard from secondhand. So they can go in and search on things like let's say the terms Office 365. And so here we go. And then go straight to that point in the video without having to watch the whole thing. So words, phrases, um, those are all searchable because the on-demand piece, we create a full text index that has a transcript that scrolls in real time. We can also add interactivity. If we have a form we want to add from Microsoft Forms, maybe to capture people's uh, perspective, their thoughts, their ideas. We can add those inline right here. And I, well, there's more videos out on that. So we're not going to spend a bunch of time there. And lastly, though, if we come back here, there is people and anybody who appears in the video, we can see who they are, when they appear. We can do facial recognition where we actually take a look at the people in a given video. So a lot can be done around that. So that's the three flavors of Microsoft Live Events. Some quick tips on delivery. Number one, roles. So as we're doing something like, you know, a Teams Live Event or any of those, there's a couple of roles that come into question and basically three. Now they could be a single person, assuming all three. Ideally though, we're going to divide them up to lessen the overhead on any given individual. Those roles are producer, moderator, and presenter. So from a producer standpoint, that's the person who determines what's being shown. They do the mix and matching. They can mute and unmute speakers and things like that. Um, and that person is really a true producer. Then there is a moderator, somebody who reads questions and those things, whether they're moderated Q&A, whether it's Yammer questions, or even if we have a form, for example, capturing uh, input from remote attendees, even in the Microsoft Streams instance, the moderator can re 
review and look at those things in real time, respond directly to people if appropriate, and then verbally cue that up for their presenters. Again, so they're not distracted. And then at set points, they can say, yes, we have a few questions and or shout outs, etc. Tee that up for the presenter or presenters and help that to go much smoother. Finally, you have your presenters, and those are the folks who actually are presenting. We want to minimize their distraction. We want to offload the production to the producer. So, for example, in Teams live events, add them as a presenter. That way they don't have the full production view. They're not seeing moderated Q&A, and we can make it much simpler. Next thing is format. A couple of tips around that. Number one, video. A lot of folks get concerned about video. They don't want to have their face showing. They're embarrassed or they're self-conscious. But especially when we're talking about remote workers and in potential uh, business disruption and you're providing for business continuity, sometimes, and, and I often am an advocate, I'm not doing it right now, I understand that, but remember, there are ways that we connect with a speaker. First of all, in text, based upon the words that are written, right? We can set a tone or we can set an improper tone inadvertently just by what we type. That's mitigated somewhat when we move from text to audio because now we have inflection, we have tone, we have pace, of delivery, all those things that affect how their user receives the messaging, right? It's a much more effective way of communicating, which is why audio podcasts are so so popular today. You know, very little overhead to create, and but it's, it enables a, a richer delivery and connection to the speaker via that audio. Finally, video is the most effective. Why? Because we know from communication that people gain so much from facial cues. It's those unspoken uh, gestures and, and, and expressions from a person's face that somebody can pick up. So if you have somebody who can deliver a message, especially during times of business disruption, deliver it calmly, deliver it measured, um, you can, it can have a much greater effect than any written message and definitely, and as well, even over audio, because those facial cues and body language become all important. And it helps the user to connect, get that empathetic connection to the person in the message being presented that you're never gonna get in just text. So that's a, something to think about. For Q&A, I highly recommend having a moderate, at least one moderator, if not more. If you're going to have a large scale, you may want, might want to have multiple moderators so that in moderated Q&A in Teams or on Yammer, or even again, if you're doing like a form capture with stream uh, live events, you can respond directly to individuals. And again, you can offload and queue up the appropriate questions and then capture for follow-up those questions that could not be addressed during the time. So that's a couple of things. On the network end, two big things to think about. Number one, for people on your network, if you do not have, and I'm gonna go to um, some dashboards here. So I'm gonna come back to Teams or to Stream, and I'm going to select Admin Settings. The first of which is for people who will still be potentially on your network, you want to have set up a ECDN. This will help to minimize the traffic through your egress points or how people get out to the internet. We have three primary ones who are partners. I'll provide links to those uh, in the full post. Hive collective and ramp and they each do things a little differently in how they facilitate and mitigate the traffic on your network but they all have it's important to note try before you buy so if you find yourselves right now looking to hey we want to deliver some of this but you know we don't have budgeted to purchase and all that go take a look to the links i provide they do provide try before you buy um and so you could, you know, potentially leverage some of this for
for those users. But we're talking remote users, in which case this doesn't really play. So for those remote workers, as we're having, you know, possible, we're doing business continuity by enabling remote workers, then what we can do is really take a look at our VPN settings, that virtual private network settings. So, so I had a couple of customers who said they were having issues with end users and it turned out they were not split tunneling. You want to, and again, we'll have the links to the documentation so that you can quickly enable and provide for those remote users. You don't want them coming in through the VPN and then viewing the video through that. They should go straight from their house to the VPN. And Microsoft Stream, that team has provided the settings and things that you need to configure so that your VPN and other things that you may uh, put in the middle of any traffic are configured appropriately so that users at home will get their best possible experience. Lastly, there are a couple of resources that you might want to take a look at. And again, we'll have links to them. So docs.com, if you go out to docs.microsoft.com and you were to search on live events, here is the live events across and it's kind of a getting started, but then it has links into all kinds of things around network, you know, administration, etc. It's all there, all of it's documented. This is the great single point of reference for all that. And finally, if you need some assistance, you need somebody to remote help you, we do have, it's in preview right now, so it is free during this preview time. We have the Microsoft 365 Live Events Assistance. And you can come in, fill out a form to request assistance. They have a documentation page. It gives you all the details, but it helps you with setting up before the event, rehearsal, during an event, and after event, uh, things that you need to do. And so take a look. We'll have both of these links in the post uh, that this video will be on. So there's a lot there that you can get started quickly and easily today because you own it. The easiest way is in Teams, but certainly Teams, Yammer, Stream, all great ways to do this depending upon your staff, your levels of expertise, um, but you can deliver to large scale audiences rapidly. All right, so that's it. That's my tips. If you are find yourself working increasingly with remote workers and you want to do addressing of those remote workers at scale and move beyond just simple posting of emails and text and other things, Microsoft 365 Live Events is a great way to help you. If you own 365, you already have this, it's a great thing that you can turn on, you can configure. Um, we're providing in this post all the links to the settings and things that need to be set up. But as you can see, you can rapidly set up a live event and deliver it quickly and easily to your users, up to 10,000 concurrent attendees, and then have it available on demand immediately afterwards. I hope you found this useful. If you do have questions about this or other things, you can always find myself again and my colleagues at aka.ms slash HLS blog. That's aka.ms slash HLS blog. You can also find me, however, on LinkedIn at any given time under Mike Gennady, on Twitter at Gennady, and finally, I have a Facebook page at M Gennady as well. So feel free to reach out, love to communicate, love to help you. If you're looking at business disruption and there's other content that myself or my colleagues can post, please let us know. We are here to help and that's what we wanna do. So thanks for watching. I hope that you have a great day. Weekend is coming up for me. I know that I'm planning on spending it with family and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and the weeks to come. With that, Take care and ciao.